Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how you can colorize a black and white photo like I have right here. And here's the colorized version. Now, Photoshop Elements has a colorize photo feature, which is up here underneath Enhance, and come down here to Colorize Photo. But this really only works out well if you have people in the picture. Otherwise, it's kind of hit and miss. We'll be using this partially, but also a different technique as well to get the best colorization. But before we get to that, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who's helping to support this channel and keep this channel here on YouTube. My channel is 100% fan supported. If you also want to help keep this channel on YouTube and keep these videos coming, then there are three different ways that you can do that. The first way and the easiest right now is just to click on that thanks button. Bottom right hand corner, just below the video, and then send me a thanks. That goes a long ways to keeping my channel going. Of course, it's always great if you subscribe. If I can ever get to 100,000 subscribers, that puts me into a new level on YouTube, which would make it much easier to keep this channel going. And then what supports this channel the most and keeps this channel going and has been keeping this channel going for this past 15 years is sales of my training courses for Photoshop Elements. And if you wanna find out how you can get your own copy of my training for Photoshop Elements, take a look in the description for a link to all of my different training courses. Okay, well, so now I'll take a look and see how we can colorize this photo here. If you wanna follow along with this project, I put a download link for this photograph the black and white version right here in the description. Go ahead, click on that. You can then download that picture. And the first thing I'll be doing is just to get rid of all of these layers in here. And we'll start from the very basic background image. Okay, the first thing I want to do is to do a colorized version of this. And whenever I'm working on a project, I like to make a backup copy or a duplicate of the background layer. So right here where it says background, right click on that, click on duplicate layer, choose okay. There we go. And then hide the background. That's just a safety, just in case. We won't need this in this project, but again, I like doing this all the time just as a habit. Good habit to be in. Okay, let's do the Colorize tool first. Go up to Enhance, come down here to Colorize Photo. And then Photoshop Elements will take a look at this and think about it and decide what color should be in here. And if you notice, if there aren't any people, we tend to get monochromatic or close to monochromatic images. Like that one, this one has a bit more color in it. There we go. Here's one that's more in the blue-purple range. It's a little bit of browns happening in there, but not much. So it has more of a green tinge to it. I'll go with the second one, which just has a bit more color in the door back there. I think the door looks just fine, but the guitar is a bit washed out. We can do much better on the guitar part of this photograph. So we'll use this for the background and we'll do the guitar manually. Okay, just click on the OK button and there we go. All right, the next thing we need to do is to decide on the colors that we want. We'll be using two different colors in here, one for the face of the guitar. It's kind of a warm wood coloration and then we'll go for more of a reddish tone here for the side of the guitar. And the first thing you want to do is to make a new layer right here. And we're going to fill this layer with our basic color for the guitar. So let's go over here to our color picker, click on the foreground color. And in here, I want to have something in kind of the yellows, orange, yellow, orangish in here someplace. Now, left is less color, right is more color. You don't want to be too saturated. So come to the left a little bit and something in, it looks pretty good. It's lighter further to the left like that. This is just a personal choice. You can choose any color you want in here. Choose OK. And let's fill this layer. Got the paint bucket. Click in here. It just fills the whole layer with that color. We now need to blend this with the photo in behind. So go up here where it says normal. These are blend modes. Come down to color. So it just adds the color in. Now all I care about here is the color of the face of the guitar and nothing else. And that looks just fine. That's a nice color for that. It's a lot brighter, more colorful than what we have right here. Let's now put a layer mask on this layer. Here's our layer mask. And I want to fill the layer mask. Notice that light blue outline. We're on the layer mask side right now. Fill that with black. So let's change this to a black. Paint bucket, click in here. And that hides everything on that layer. We can now bring that back in again by painting on the layer mask with white and showing that coloration. So go over here to the paintbrush. Change our color to white. I have mine set at a hard edge brush because we're working with hard edges in here. That's a pretty small brush size. I'll use the right square bracket, bring my brush size up a bit. That's better. And let's just zoom in on this. Now, depending upon where you're painting in, you may or may not want to come in and make a selection. Paintbrushes are round, so it's kind of hard to get in the corners like that. So I'll start off this part with a selection. Grab the selection tool here, and use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll start over here someplace. And let's just come right around in here. You know, bring this straight across. There we go. And right up against this edge. And then come straight down like that. And we'll come right around here as well. So 
That gives me those two corners that I care about. I think I can freehand most of the rest. Let's come back here to the beginning again, click on that. So this area is now selected. I'll grab the paintbrush. And as I brush in here, what it does is it shows that part of that new coloration. And what I care about here is just this corner and the corner right down here. There we go. That's the important part. Control D to deselect. Now the rest of this, I think I can probably just freehand this. Just come around in here and just do this freehand. Now notice that the area outside here, and just change the tools in a pointer hand. There we go. This area here is colorized. It's gone kind of a warm tone in there. That should be a brighter white. So we can fix that as well. We'll get back to that in just a moment. But let's just finish the face in here of the guitar. And just come around and paint in. Now if you mess up like that, it's easy to fix. Just change to a black color and then paint in. And that hides that again. So the nice thing about this technique is you can go back and forth and fix any mistakes. We'll be using that trick here as soon as we finish this part of the guitar. I want to see that white area a lot brighter. Okay, and just work your way around and then finish the whole face of the guitar using this technique just to add in our new coloration in here on top of the coloration that we got from the colorized photo. And I'll stop it at this point and I'll finish the rest of that part of the guitar off camera. Let's now take a look at this white edge right along in here. And this should be a lot brighter. It was colorized by the colorized tool. I don't want that kind of that yellowish color. And that's down here on the background copy. This is our colorized layer. Click in here and make a layer mask on this copy. White shows, black hides. So let's go to our black brush here. I was left square bracket just to make my mouse size smaller. And now if I paint over this, I'm now getting rid of that warm tone in there. I'm hiding that part of the colorization and I'm showing the original black and white image in behind. And that gives us a much more white appearance on that. So I'll go around the whole picture here. Anywhere where I want it to be white, I'll come in and do this to kind of clean up and get rid of that yellowish tone that we got from the colorization. Look, I'll take it that far. And the same thing in here, I'll get this whole center section and get this so it gives a real nice black and white effect in here. Now you may want to come in and you know do some more of this yellowish tone in here. I can show you how that's done. Again, I'll just do part of this and I'll finish the rest off camera. There we go, just come around. I'll do about a third of it, about like that. Let's see, I want this part right in here. Let's get our arrow back again. This part in here, I want to have this in this warm color here. Easy to do, let's go back up to this layer. I want to show that part. So let's go back to our white, back to our paintbrush, and then I brush in here. And that then shows me that color layer in that section. So we're showing or hiding the different layers and then using that to colorize the image. It's really very easy to do, as you can see. It takes a little bit of time, of course, because you're working with these different layers, but it's not a difficult process. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's just do a control zero and see how we're doing. Okay, upper left-hand corner, that's what we just did. Much more natural looking in here than area down there, a lot brighter. Let's now take a look into the area over here. And we'll zoom in a bit and see that a bit better. There you go. Much nicer here than it is over in here. It's a bit washed out over here. Much nicer here. Let's now come in and do this little bit right in here. And this has more of a reddish coloration to it. Photoshop Elements had the right idea. It just didn't take it far enough. Same exact trick. Let's make a new layer. There we go. Let's go back to our colors. And I want this more towards the reds, so over here someplace, and a lot darker this time. Around in here someplace, maybe a bit brighter, a bit more saturated. Something in that range I think will work out well for us. Choose OK. Let's fill that layer. Paintbrush, fill the layer. There it is. Layer mask, and then fill the layer mask with black. Hides the whole thing. We're on the layer mask layer. Look for that light blue outline. Back to the paintbrush. I want to go to white. And then as we paint in here, it brings in that color like that. Let's now blend that into the stuff underneath. Blend modes, come down to color, and there we go. And same trick, just come in here, and on this one I can just freehand a lot of this. Now depending upon the corner, you can freehand. Like this kind of a corner, I can freehand that pretty easily. 
that corner, I can't get into that corner, I can't get into those corners up there. So for those, let's just zoom in a bit and I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool again. And let's just make a lasso around the areas that I want to come in on here. This is right around up in here and then right around this little bit here. And here's that corner I couldn't get the brush into. And we'll come straight down. And a second corner down here that I wouldn't be able to get into. So get that corner. I could freehand the rest of this section over here, but I'll just go ahead and do the lasso anyway. It's a fairly small area. If you want to have these things really exact, then just do a selection for the whole thing. And let's just take this back up here to the beginning. There we go. So I'll paint into here. There's our paintbrush. We're still on that layer mask. And now I can get right up into those corners and not worry about messing up that edge. And then just paint it in. There we are. Now, if you're working on a larger area, you may want to go for a larger paintbrush. I think this is fine for this small size. And there that is. And then Control D to deselect. Let's go to Control Zero to back out. And I'll zoom in just a little bit here. And much nicer coloration here than I have over here. Now, once you have your coloration in here, you can go back and change this if you want to. You do have that ability. So let's go up here to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer. And two things you can do, you can go lighter or darker using the levels, or you can change the color by going here to the Hue Saturation. Click on that checkbox right here, choose OK. And here I can bring my saturation down like that, just a little less saturated or more saturated, so you have that ability in there. I can go a little lighter or darker right here and just fine tune and get the color exactly the way you want it with an adjustment layer here for hue saturation. And I think that looks real natural. Okay, one last thing I want to show you here is just zoom in a bit. And the same problem here in that this line here should be white, but it's kind of yellowish. Same thing out here and around down there, of course. And the exact same problem as we had previously, it's on this layer here, the colorized layer. So we'll convert our colors here to black and white. Again, go to the paintbrush. Still a small size brush, you can see right here. And I want to paint black onto the layer mask. So let's go to the layer mask side, double click. Look for the light blue outline, there we go. And then if I paint in here, I'm hiding the colorization just on that section. And that makes it look white again. It gets rid of that yellowish tint that we gained from the first initial colorizing step. So I'll go through here and just to convert this whole area here, all the white lines, I'll put those back to the original black and white. It just removes the color out of those. It makes them look much more like a nice standard white color, especially contrasting against the warmth of the colors that we're adding in. There we go, right up in here a little bit. Let's back out just a touch. And that's looking really nice right up in here, real nice colorized version of this. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna help out this channel stay here on YouTube, then First, consider sending me a thanks button right down there, bottom right-hand corner, real fast, real easy to do. Don't forget to subscribe. That also will really help out my channel a lot. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I think it's the best way to actually learn how to use this great program. The link for that is in the description.